Hello and welcome to Recruiter 360 TV. I'm Toby Babb and delighted to be joined today by Paul McVeigh. Uh, Paul, welcome. Thank you very much, Toby. Paul, as you'll all know, is a keynote speaker of renown. He is a former Premier League and international footballer with Northern Ireland and uh, one of the biggest guys I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, all I can say is I'm glad we're sitting down for this conversation because uh, it could be a little bit embarrassing when I come up to your waist. <laughs> Not in that kind of way. <laughs> Paul, tell us, tell us a little bit more about, um, about your background. Well, uh, I suppose it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, being Irish, coming across from pretty much on the boat when I was 16. Not yeah. literally on the boat, but coming across <laughs> at 16 and, and uh, joined Tottenham Hotspur for... A good six years and and what a you know fantastic kind of education to be yeah. walking into the same training ground as the likes of Jurgen Klinsmann and Teddy Sharon and David yeah. Genel Les Ferdinand. You Nicky. talked about them being great influences. Just you, right? they're just like some of the best players that you know this country's ever seen. Yeah. And obviously clearly I'd ever seen at the time and and seeing the way they were conducting themselves and how they play every day and how they trained and approached their their profession even though it was you know their job but they loved it at the same time and, and how much fun they had with it it was yeah, just yeah. like it was just such a great well they were all great role models for me to say right even though I'm only 16 first year in the youth team yeah. this is a great opportunity for me to learn of what the best of the best do and I probably wasn't you know consciously deciding that at the time it was more implicit learning where it was almost absorbing it in without actually realizing yeah. just what was happening but yeah, and they set the standards, right, most, most of the guys. It, it's funny in, in football because you think like the manager has sets a lot of the standards, but actually the players are very much policing themselves and people like the Teddy Sheringhams and Les Ferdinands were calling all the shots. You know, yeah. whatever they said yeah, happened, yeah. then everyone sort of fell into line. But then the other side of that, you know, being a 16, 17-year-old lad in the canteen and suddenly Teddy Sheringham, who, you know, this is 1994, 95. Yeah. He's one of England's best players, you know, around that Euro 96 yeah, time, yeah. coming in and he's just had just won the Golden Boot for the Premier League, top earner at Spurs, and he's coming in and asking me, how'd my weekend go? You know, did you, did you yeah, get yeah. a girl at the week? You know, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and you just going, why is he interested? But it just showed of that, even though he was at the vast, very highest level, just having that humility and, and that ability to kind of keep his feet on the ground. And, and he was genuinely interested in yeah. what I was what I was doing and, and you know didn't have to do it but the fact that he did or is that David Ginola yeah. being French coming in and shaking your hand and just straight away you just had an idea of professionalism humility you know just just being very very good people yeah. and, and that's something that really stuck with me through the rest of my career and unfortunately you know had a had a good kind of 16 year career of yeah. you know, winning winning different championships playing in the Premier League um, playing at the national football, so it's it's just it was, a, but then also getting relegated at the same time. So you, you have the whole kind of highs and lows, highs and lows. Every every kind of experience you can have in football, and 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 you know ultimately now that's that's helping me in my role as a sports psychologist. Or and that's what you've been doing recently, right? Yeah. So I, I think whenever it was whenever it was playing, I was always fascinated by the kind of mindset and and why different people do what they do, and why is it two players who can either have equal ability or even one player can have more ability than another mm. and yet that more talented player yeah. you know, doesn't play well or doesn't get a contract or can't get in the team and yet someone else who just, just is working hard and you know, just has a better approach, a better attitude, how does he have a better career in football? And that, that was real kind of fascinating for me whenever I saw how at Spurs we had the best young players but they didn't always go on and become professionals and you know, even though I'm sitting down, but you know I'm only five feet six, and for me coming in, not the physically the best player, yeah. not technically the best player, or even tactically, and yet how can I have a career longer than a lot of the other players? And that, that was something that really stuck with me. Of yeah. why does that happen? And I think I'm sure we're going to discuss this, but Absolutely, I really yeah. think that comes back to mindset. So, so it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because it, it's not just football. No, it translates absolutely across to every walk of life. And you've been yeah. working now with um, large corporates. You've been working with the financial sector. You've been speaking to people all around the world um, about this whole concept of mindset. And it, and it is a fascinating thing. That yeah. there, there are two people who have exactly the same opportunity. Let's take it in the recruitment sector. Two people working with the same candidates, the same clients, the same database. And one of them will treble, quadruple what the other person does with exactly the same opportunity. Yeah. Now, mindset's got to be the big part in that, right? I think it's the only part. Yeah. You know that that's you know, so not without not trying to plug it or anything, but like I wrote a book and it was called The Stupid Footballer Is Dead, and it was purely on the fact that you will have players who have physical 
attributes. You know, someone like a Yaya Toure or a Sol Campbell or Thierry Henry, they've just got the physical makeup that I don't have. Yeah. And that's fine, I can't do anything about that. Then you have the players who are talented, you know, just, just fantastic talent in their legs. They just look classy, they've got that. And I think you sort of, not that you have it or you don't have it, you definitely have an, a, a base that you probably developed at a professional level mm. or you don't. Mm. But then the other part, and for me, the third element of, of being a sort of top class anything, doesn't even have to be a footballer, recruitment, mm. consultant, whatever it is, it's just purely down to the mindset. Mm. What is it that you're doing? And you're talking about two guys coming in, how they're approaching their week. Mm. I think the only difference is that, you know, mm. experience is going to come into it, yep. of course, but it still doesn't come back to, we're all having setbacks, we're all having sort of different things happen to us, all these different experiences. Yeah. How are you dealing with it? How are you almost rationalizing it? Yeah. And then how are you going to allow that to bring it on to a better performance or improved result in, in your job or, or in your role? And that for me just comes back to, it's almost like if you think you're going to go into a job or have a week and you're not going to have a setback or any kind of, you know, knockbacks throughout your, throughout your time, yeah. it's almost being naive. So expecting it is part and parcel of what you're doing. So when you get it and then you get downheartened by it, that for me is very naive. That whole concept of mental toughness is is, is a fascinating thing, isn't it? And how people can um, be hit and disappear for a while or, or actually see it as fuel to, to come. What what constitutes that? Is it background? Is it is it just a pure mindset thing? Is it the people around them? What, what allows some people to, to wither and some people to thrive in adversity? Yeah. It's a fantastic question. I think you know, it's just people way smarter than me have, have tried to answer that, and and I think we're still working on it. You know, as you know, so the fact that I've just finished my masters in sports psychology, I've been studying this area for the last number of years, and I just, it's so difficult to pinpoint it. And that's you know, this is probably one of the reasons, even though the the masters was so tough, probably one of the the benefits I got from it was just being able to critically analyze things like why yeah. is that this this person can do it. And there's not a simple answer. Yeah. That that is, the, I think that's my kind of whole understanding. Yeah. Of it. There's not a simple answer. So, for instance, take take our backgrounds. I'm coming from Belfast and growing up in Belfast in the '70s and '80s. You know, yeah. a lot of stuff happening, a lot of troubles, a lot of kind of you know, um, different incidents that are happening on a daily basis. That yeah. you know, pretty much in a war zone. Yeah. Even though people might not have called it that, but it seemed like that. But yeah. for me, it's just normal. Yeah. So I'm just going to school and seeing tanks driving down past my house yeah. and across the street. And you're just thinking, all right. We just had a few Volvos going <laughs> across. <my hand." laughs> you know, and so you could probably say, okay, is that because I had maybe a slightly more difficult upbringing that I might have had a bit more of a fighting spirit and more, I want to get out of this place to yeah. try and reach a certain level. Whereas you might've had a different background and going to a certain school or certain, you know, family support or whatever, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what yeah. that environment is, but it's almost you're taking the sort of the benefits or the positives out of your background. Yeah. I'm taking what could be potentially be drawbacks, but I actually make them into a positive yeah. and yeah. say, I want to have a better life and I want to work hard because I can see people are working hard, they're just working in different areas. Was that always the same for you? Because you, know, you, you, were, what, you were young, weren't you, when you left, uh, when you left 16, Belfast, 16 yeah. years old. So it's a mature mindset to have on that, to know where you wanted to be and what you wanted to be at that sort of stage. Was it just you working harder than other people? Was it no, always part of you? I think, I think it was, I was always very focused of like wanting to go forward yeah. in terms of, I was very clear that this is what I want to do. Yeah. I was really wanted to be a professional footballer. Now, if I got there or not, that's a completely different ball game. Yeah, yeah. Too many elements, you know, coming into the equation. But I think that it's, I was very, very clear, this is what I want to do. I want to be a professional football. And even when I actually became a first year youth team player, it's yeah. clear you're not a professional. But even at 16, I had my goal of, I want to have a long term career in football. Yeah. And I also want to leave football completely injury free. Yeah. Now, things like that. Probably I might have been a bit weird as a, <laughs> as a 16 year old. <laughs> the injury and, free bit. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's only because I would have seen someone like Gary Mabbott yeah. on our treatment table and the physio spending 45 minutes with him, trying to bandage him up to get him out to train. Yeah, yeah. And as he's you know, in his sort of early 30s, and I'm thinking, I don't want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm already putting in place in my mind, well, if I don't want to be like that, how do I want to be injury free? Which led me to something like my mum having a conversation with me and she's saying, so Paul, um, have you ever tried yoga? Yeah. And I'm going, 
<laughs> in the church hall with middle-aged women. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm still getting heat to try Pilates. Yeah. It's, it's not happening. No, but and I was like, not really. But she was like, oh well, it's quite good for your, you know, for your flexibility, improving your core strength, yeah. all these different reducing injuries, all these different things. And it was just the fact that I was open yeah, yeah. to the idea and the possibility. So I was like, okay, I'll so try. So we're talking it. about a growth mindset, right? So straight away, I, and again, I didn't yeah. know that I had it, yeah. or I didn't know that it was what it was, or even understand the concept. It's just the fact that my mum said it to me. I said, okay, mm. what's the worst that can happen? Mm. And, so and that's always been your approach. To and I think it was right? also because maybe you know, going back to sort of backgrounds, maybe my dad was always saying, why don't you try this, or why don't you do this, or make sure you keep working hard at this. So it's, it is a bit like going back to what you're saying. Yeah. You know, you might have had people encourage you in a certain way. I obviously had that from some family, but then going out in the environment outside of the house, and yeah. it was probably slightly trickier. Mm.